Welcome to this node breakdown for Mardini 2024 with Grayscale Gorilla. This is day five, and today's node is the Light Mixer node. So once again, this is going to be a LOP level node because we're working with LookDev. So what I would recommend is firstly changing from whatever desktop mode you're using to Solaris or Solaris LookDev. For this one, I'm going to use Solaris LookDev and I'll tell you why shortly. So this file that I have over here is entirely built on the stage level. There's just a scene over here and a material library on a camera. So it's just a very basic setup. Over here on the right, I have a bunch of lights. Now, if we go ahead and just render this, you can see what I have. Now, there's a lot of lights in the scene and it may be difficult to tell which ones are doing what. So when we're looking at the light mixer node, that's where it's going to come in handy. When we use the light mixer node, it's going to take all of these lights that we have set up over here and it's going to allow us access to it all through a single node. And to do this, all we have to do is go ahead and drop a light mixer node and just plug it in anywhere after our lights. That means we can plug it in after this merge node or just straight after these lights over here. When we do that, you'll see that in this parameter section up at the top, we have all of our lights shown under the single lights folder. What we can do now is just click, hold shift, and then click at the end to select all of them and then drag them over over here. Now this by default will show you the attributes for each light. So these are all of the attributes that I've already set up for them above over here. The thing is, each one of these can also be controlled through these sliders. So this is a really interesting way to work with your lighting because on the right hand side you can see that we have exposure and on the left hand side you can see that we have intensity. So you can control the intensity and exposure for each of your lights and each one of them have some interesting options. For example, we can disable a particular light or we can solo it out, right? So we can see exactly what that light's contribution is to the scene. Now this is great because we can solar out a light, see what it's doing, and then increase or decrease the amount of contribution that it is giving to the scene. The cool thing is we can also change light colors from here. So if we want to go ahead and just take a look at this full light, we can go ahead and make it some orange or red color. And then when we add it back with the rest of the lights, you'll have this slight red tint. Now, if we've made changes and we go over to the attribute section, we'll see where those changes exist. Any value that's bold or has a red dot next to it means that it's been changed. So we can see that we changed our color of that one and we've changed the intensity of this one. You can right click and just say revert to defaults and revert to defaults. That'll just set it back to what it was. Now, another extremely useful thing is when we have certain lights that kind of work together, it's useful to add them to what is known as a collection. So if I go ahead and just select my box full light, my full environment light, my full front light, and let's also include this spot background light. Over here, I can just right click and say new collection from selection. This will create a collection and we could just call this full lights. And what you'll see is this over here. Now this one will actually control all of those lights. So if we disable this, you can see that it disables multiple lights, right? So we're controlling multiple lights through a single collection on the side over here. But that's not the only thing, we can solo those out and then we can make changes to them. Perhaps we don't want such brightness from our full lights. We can decrease their values like this and we can maybe add some color to them. And then we can disable the solo and see how it fits in with the rest of our scene. Now, of course, you can also add lights or remove lights from collections. You can extend a collection out over here. And as you can see, these are all the lights in that collection. All we have to do is click on one of them and say delete. That will remove it from that collection. Now, we can also make multiple collections. So let's make one for our room lights as well. New collection from selection, room, right? So that'll just add another collection for our room lights. And now we also have these that we can solo out. And doing it this way allows you to get some very easy split toning. So let's just go ahead and say, make some sort of vaporwave type color scheme, right? It's really easy if we just split them up into collections and affect all of our lights together. All right, so I'm just going to revert everything to default and I wanna show you one last thing. An extremely useful thing to use with this is the render gallery. So over here, you'll see the render gallery. If you're using just the regular Solaris viewport, this one over here, what you can do is you can also add it. So if you go add over here, new pane, go to Solaris and then render gallery, this is incredibly useful because what this allows is if we go to our camera view and just do a render, while we're rendering, we can do something called a snapshot. In the bottom left over here, you'll see snapshot. Click on that and it'll take a snapshot of the current render. The cool thing about this is that we can go ahead and make changes now. So let's just change a bunch of things about our scene. So we'll do some sort of split toning on this, right? And then we can take another snapshot. And now we can rename our snapshots. So perhaps we rename this one 
to Vaporwave. We rename this one over here to default. And let's just do one more where we perhaps make some sort of dramatic lighting. So let's just revert to defaults quickly. And now let's just drop our full lights. All right, so now we have that. Make another snapshot. We can rename this one to intense. And now the awesome thing about this is that even though we've made all these changes and we've experimented with our lights, all we have to do to revert back to a particular lighting setup is to just right click on any one of these snapshots and say revert to the snapshot. What that'll do is it'll set our network back to its state when it was in this setup. So now of course this doesn't work with just the light mixer, this works with everything in the scene, but it does work really well with the light mixer because you can make all sorts of different changes and you can compare them over here. So you can easily just click between default, vaporwave and intense, right? Just like that. And whichever one you like, you just right click, revert network to the snapshot and it will revert. Lastly, do keep in mind that you can also transform your lights from here. So we do have the option for all of our lights to be transformed directly from here. For example, our room light over here, perhaps we'd like to just move it around. We can do that. And once again, you'll see these two dots telling you that changes have been made. You can, of course, once again, say clear translate or clear rotate values, and that will revert you back to defaults. So I hope that this helped you understand the light mixer node and the power that comes along with it. We can have all sorts of collections of lights. We can make changes to them through sliders. We can revert to defaults. And through the snapshot functionality of Solaris, we can take snapshots of our network and then revert back to any lighting setup that we might like. So I do hope that this one helped you. I will be seeing you tomorrow with the material linker lock. So thank you for watching. Bye.